Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and it's time for another breakfast with Blaha. And today I'm having fat free Greek yogurt, frozen mangoes. All right, let's talk about diet. And this is one of the problems that we have with diet research. It's one of the problems that we have with fad diets. Um, it's an issue overall, and the problem is that a lot of the data we have is short term, meaning researchers like to do short term studies that last six weeks, 12 weeks, a year. Not very often do they do really long term direct clinical studies because it's hard to track someone's diet for five years straight, right? It's usually self-reported stuff, epidemiology, um, these things. All right, so we're stuck with short-term health markers when we look at a lot of things like inflammation, lipid profiles, fasting glucose. Uh, and this makes things a little bit difficult for the layman. This makes it difficult for people out there who are trying to figure out what diet to do, and it leaves it open for con men to spin any sort of weird, funny diet that they want to for health, right? It makes it easy. By that same token, you'll have a person who follows a diet of any type, their blood work improves, right? Their blood work improves. So then they think this specific diet is the way. Right, without thinking of what are the long term of it if you were to try to sustain it, because that's the other problem. An eating approach that you choose to do, if it's not sustainable, then you lose it to use it to lose weight, what's gonna happen? You're gonna regain it. Usually you're gonna regain all of it too. Whether it's twenty pounds, fifty pounds, a hundred pounds. There are people who've regained two hundred pounds that they've lost, by the way spoke with a guy who's done that it's just crazy to me but it, it it does happen so what's going on here well the the fact of the matter is any diet even a diet that we know is terrible that's deficient that has other has foods in it in excess that we should not be eating any diet that causes significant fat loss improves short-term health markers Okay. And rightly so. So when I make that statement, I'm not making it lightly. Right? I'm still saying these diets are bad, but did the person improve their, their health? If a person is, is obese, over fat, and they lose 30 pounds of body fat, there is a 99.999% chance their blood work is going to improve. If they suffer from type 2 diabetes... A completely 100% lifestyle induced disease and I want to be clear on that type 2 diabetes is only something that you can give yourself through lifestyle and it actually is really hard to do that's what's amazing that we have so many type 2 diabetics in America it's amazing that we do because it's really fucking hard to get you have to treat your body like a complete and utter trash dumpster for years and years on end. Like you almost have to intentionally make yourself sick to get it. Yeah, we have millions of people with it, which is impressive. It's impressive that people are actually willing to put in that much effort to eat garbage seven days a week. It's impressive. Not in a good way. also largely curable now people say what's well, not curable it'll come back if they regain the body fat in other words it's cured as long as they don't get fat again because they have the same chance of getting it again the second time they did the first time they didn't have it the first time you lose enough body fat your type 2 diabetes will for all purposes go away it'll disappear you don't need medications you have no symptoms, your blood work doesn't show it, you don't have it. So I hate this, it's not curable. If they no longer need medications and there's no signs of it, it's gone. It returns when they return to the lifestyle that causes it because it's lifestyle cost. They don't have it anymore. They lose the weight, 
when the type 2 diabetes reduces or goes away, guess what? They've improved their health. And doing that by any means necessary is technically fine. I mean, let's be honest. If a person has type 2 diabetes and they use the worst diet imaginable to lose that weight, are they going to be healthier for it? Yes. Well, they, would they have done even better had they done a more sustainable, healthier, more balanced diet? Yes, also. But they're still healthier for it. In other words, they've dramatically increased their lifespan and quality of life, even eating a trash dumpster diet, as long as they kept a calorie deficit and lost the weight. And here's what we know with that. Here's what we know. Remember the Twinkie Mountain Dew diet experiment where the nutrition professor lost 30 pounds of fat living on a diet of, I believe it was Twinkies and Mountain Dew, and it might have been some other soda, the Twinkie diet with a protein shake and a vitamin every day. He had a calorie deficit and something like walked every day. I think he did some light resistance training. He lost 30 pounds of fat. His blood work improved across the board. Fasting, glucose, insulin sensitivity, everything. Lipid profile. Why? Because he lost 30 pounds of body fat. Even your C-reactive protein, all your inflammatory markers will go down. Even if you eat a trash dumpster diet. You just eat less of the same food that gave you these diseases. You just eat less of it. It will work. The problem is people then judge the quality of an overall diet based upon their short-term progress. No reasonable person thinks the Twinkie diet is healthy or sustainable long-term. All evidence says it isn't. But in the short term, what happened? That. The problem is when people try to follow a dietary approach that helps them lose weight quickly, but then they still have food, food combos in their diet that aren't good or they're deficient. Perfect example. The very meat and dairy heavy ketogenic diet. It's ultra high in saturated fat. We know when you look at their blood work, they still have elevated LDL as a result of it. And that happens on this diet when they get back to caloric maintenance. A lot of them are still fat because they don't get that lean. Short term, they improve their health. But then there's this longer term that diet is going to cause other health issues down the road. And it, and it will. Not saying it's because it's low carb, I'm saying it's because it's high saturated fat. It's excessive saturated fat. Not the fact that it's ketogenic. And we do need to clarify that point. Vegan diet, be full of deficiencies. Long term health issues, you will have health problems as a vegan. All right? You will have dietary deficiencies. But you might lose 50 pounds in the short term. You're going to feel better. Your blood work's going to look great for a couple years. Until you have problems with the B12 deficiency, the omega-3 deficiency, all the other stuff that kicks in. Problems getting enough protein from muscle if you're trying to train. I mean, this is, we train on this channel. Same thing carnivore-type diet. When you lose a bunch of weight, you lose 30 pounds of body fat on a carnivore diet, your blood work and health are going to improve in the short term. So in all these, let's say, you know, you were, were a diabetic, type 2 diabetes, and you cured your diabetes with any of these diets, your health is dramatically improved, and it's going to show on your blood work. However, problem you're going to run into, you are not going to be a truly healthy person in the long term. You're going to be healthier than you were when you were fatter, and that needs to be clear. You will be healthier. But you're not going to be particularly healthy in the long term because of the unbalanced nature and deficiencies in these diets. That's, there's our problem. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.